morning, everyone. Uh, we've been looking at the topic of rest um, because we're busy people. Uh, and in some ways, our busyness, I think, has increased um, during the restrictions under COVID. And things have got more intense um, for many of us at home. Uh, if you don't believe me that we're busy, um, one example that occurs to me, and it's possibly uh, reflects badly on me, is consider how you, go, how you behave when you're in supermarket. Maybe this is just me, I don't know. But you finish your shopping and you're getting ready to pay. Do you find yourself scanning all the queues by the tills, saying which one is the smallest? And not just which one is the least people, but you're actually, if you're, if you're good at this game, you start to scan how much is in each trolley or each in basket. And then if you're really good, you start to sort of look at the people and wonder, are they going to be someone who's quick? Are they, are they sort of there in a pair and they're having a chat as they're doing it? They're going to be slow or here's a guy in a suit by himself. He's going to be quick. And you just sort of try and work out which is the quickest. This obsession with time, being effective, busyness in our culture. I've been reading through the book of Hebrews and in chapter 10, it says this. It's talking about Jesus, our great high priest. And when this priest, Jesus, had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Now, many of us have office jobs where we, we have to sit to work at a chair and a desk. But back then, most people would have stood to work. It was agricultural work or building work. And they stood to work. And at the end of the day, they sat down. To sit down is to rest. That's the point the writer is making here. And um, just before, he's talking about the other priests, the Old Testament priests. And he says, day after day, every priest stands and performs his duties. They're working and standing, but Jesus sat down. He's at rest. So my question this morning is, if we're busy people and at times we feel stressed, how can we connect with a God, with Jesus, who is at rest? Surely the fact that he's finished his work and he's at rest can offer us something in the midst of busyness. And how can we connect with that? And I want to look at this passage. We have a couple of different scenarios in this passage where we see Jesus encouraging his followers to get rest and then, and then getting rest himself. And it's not just physical rest, but it's rest with God. Rest with God. Uh, it starts off in verse 30 where the, the 12 disciples gather around Jesus to tell him what's happened. So if you go back to the start of the chapter, you'll see that they've just been sent out for the first time. The 12 disciples in twos to go and do their kingdom work, to carry on what Jesus is doing. They've been really busy and now they come back to debrief, to report to him all they had done and taught. So they're busy with work. And they're actually busy with people right now. It says there's so many people, verse 31, were coming and going. They didn't even get a chance to eat. They're inundated. Busy work, busy with people. And actually, they've had a very emotionally demanding time as well. Because the story just before is about the execution, basically the murder of John the Baptist, Jesus' own cousin, and someone they'd all have looked up to. So emotionally, they're all over the place as well. And so Jesus sees that they need rest. Verse 31, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. He offers rest. And in, in the Christian tradition, um, there's two words in particular that, that, that people use to describe this. Solitude and silence. I want to say there's three components, but let's look at these first two. Solitude and silence. Come by yourselves. Solitude. To a quiet place. Silence. But for the disciples, the, th the third bit was come with me. It was to be with Jesus, to be with God, the presence of God. But the solitude and the silence are essential. They help them to actually... Be with Jesus just by ourselves, in silence, listening to him. And the poet Mary Oliver says this, attention is the beginning of devotion. 
it's quite powerful attention as the beginning of devotion to actually have devotion and, and focus and worship Jesus you have to be attentive to him in the first place it doesn't just spring out automatically we need this time to be attentive to listen so I see three components here but the silence and the solitude are aiding this time with Jesus and they need this these disciples have just been giving now they have to receive they've just been sent out now they have to be filled up but the story merges into the feeding of the five thousand so what what happens is they're being told to come away for us but they can't get it because life is just too busy and maybe some of us feel like we know that maybe we need to get some time here to rest or some time of God. But life just takes over and the opportunity goes. People just see where they're going and they follow them and they go head on foot. And when they get there to this place of rest, there they all are in need, demanding uh, opportunity and attention from Jesus. And, and, and Jesus fulfills that. Maybe your stage of life, if there's young kids or but work, it just feels like that. And our lifestyle is 24-7. Time, some of it is, is the choices we make ourselves, our bad choices. I was reading one study. I said that the average person with an iPhone touches their iPhone, wait for it, 2,617 times a day. It's quite a specific number, but, you know, 2,600 times. The choices we make make us busy. So Jesus still ministers to these people despite his tiredness. But afterwards, he just has to get his rest. So, um, and again, it's silence and solitude. So we're at verse 45 here. And it says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and dismissed the crowd. Two sort of strongish words. He's saying, I need to be by myself. I need solitude. And so the disciples and the crowd are gone, and here Jesus is by himself. And then he goes up on a mountainside to pray. Silence. Solitude and silence. But again, these, these two components are all to aid the third. It's to pray. Before, with the 12 disciples, he was offering them time with him, come with me. Now it's just Jesus himself, and he's going to pray and spend time with the Father. But this silence and this solitude aid that. There's a composer called John Cage. If you know me, you know I, I don't know a lot about classical music, um, but I read this and I like this. He has a piece called 433. And in this piece, uh, when it's played in his um, shows, a pianist sits in front of the piano, but doesn't play a single note. And so all the people in the concert hall, they can hear these other sounds that are happening in the hall. Their, their ears tune into the ambient sounds in the concert hall. And they start to hear someone coughing or a chair scraping. They hear these other sounds. Now, this is part of his philosophy that, that everything we hear is music in some way. But the point is that when we embrace silence, can hear other things and it seems that for Jesus and his plan for his disciples solitude and silence so they can connect with him so he could connect with the father reading the story it moves into the, the boat scene it nearly appears that Jesus is up praying all night the incident with the boat happens later that night. There's no mention of any sleep. And Jesus, who's tired and exhausted and emotionally spent, given how this all started, it seems to him that prayer is more important than physical sleep. That, that rest with God is more important than physical rest. Now, I'm all for physical rest. And we talked about Sabbath a few weeks ago. And we need those patterns in our lives to take care of our bodies. We're physical people. But maybe when we're in a season when, when we can't avoid that, maybe there's something about rest with God taking, helping us in those really busy seasons. In Luke's gospel, there are nine times where Jesus goes to a quiet place. 
So Jesus gets his rest. The disciples then, when we come to them in, in, in the story, they're out in the boat and they're straining and they're still working and doing physical things. And they haven't had their rest yet. So Jesus longs to give them rest. And he does this by revealing himself to them, revealing who he is. It says um, Jesus uh, goes out to them and uh, walking on the lake. And then there's this intriguing little phrase. He was about to pass by them. Now, why would you get out on the lake, go towards them in a miraculous fashion, walking on water, just to then turn left and ignore them? Is it some sort of stunt or test? But that phrase to pass by is a phrase used in the Old Testament when God reveals his very being to people. For Moses at Mount Sinai, when God is going to reveal his name to him, it says this, when my glory passes by. It's Exodus 33. Elijah, if you remember his account with the still small voice, the phrasing is this, the Lord is about to pass by. In their tiredness, Jesus reveals who he is to them as the divine. Rest in God for which silence and solitude give us so much opportunity to connect is essential for us. So I just want to encourage that we need to rest, to pause, to stop, to connect with Jesus. And the great irony for some of us in, in this culture that we live in that so values busyness and obsessed with time is, is that we think we're too busy to actually stop and avail of this. So let me leave you with this. Imagine a scenario where your marriage is not perfect. I imagine most of us, no, all of us on the screen could say that. Uh, perfect is a high bar. So your marriage is not perfect. And then your spouse comes to you and asks, can we spend more time together? Maybe one night a week of doing something, 30 minutes a day of conversation. Um, some time at the weekend, something like that. Would we say, sorry, I don't have the time? Would that excuse wear? Or if we take that 30 minutes time slot, how, what else do we spend 30 minutes on per day? TV or social media or newspapers? Possibly all three. Jesus sat down at the right hand of God. He is at rest. And we have, are invited to connect with him. It is an incredible opportunity to connect with a source of rest, a source of sustenance, a source of life. Amen.